Welcome, you're watching Develop with WP. All right, we finally made it. This is the last short code video that I will be making. And I, like you, am very excited to be done with short codes. In this video, we're going to add pagination. We touched on it a little bit before uh, in the last two videos where we inputted some data to help with pagination, but we didn't really cover it in depth. So in this video, we're really gonna go back and look at that and see why we put some of the stuff in the WP query. And we're also going to look at some new functions that WordPress provides that allows us to add pagination. We're also going to do some neat stuff with the attributes to make it less confusing to the user for when they're turning on and off pagination. So stay tuned for that. All right, so this is the last video in this short code. Cannot wait to get this part done. I hope you're as excited as I am uh, to be on to a new topic. You know, I love short codes, but we need to get going. So this last part is we're gonna add pagination. So as you can see here from the last video, we currently have this thing set up where it's, it's the attributes for this, it, the title has been changed, the count has been up to seven, the location is set to Virginia. Hence, that's why the title looks different. We have seven posts and they're from this, the location Virginia. So, but if we look at our locations, we see that Virginia actually has 11 posts. So we wanna be able to show more than just seven and we don't want to just change this to 11, the count, and have this huge list of posts. We wanna add pagination. So the way we're going to do this, you're gonna go down to just below here where we uh, reset our post data. And we're going to put it in right here for one specific reason. The main reason is, is that we're gonna create some more HTML markup and that markup needs to get appended to the end of this, this uh, variable that we've been creating. And so we're gonna do it here just before we display it. Okay, so we're gonna set a conditional first because we only wanna show this um, if certain things exist. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our jobs by location variable. So this is the variable that is in our query right here, okay? So this is our query. One of the, this query has a uh, method on it called max num pages, so max number of pages. And we're gonna do is greater than one And then we're going to do and is page. So this is only going to work on pages. This won't work on posts, the pagination part. So this max number of pages is, is letting, is WordPress's way of determining whether or not this query contains enough posts to need more than one page. So for example, in our case, if right now we're displaying seven posts, if this only had seven posts, then max number of pages would be equal to one because we would only need one page. So therefore, this would never, what we're gonna put in here is never gonna execute. The only time the code that we're gonna put in here is ever gonna execute is if the query in question has more posts than can be stored into one page and if it is on a single page. Okay, now we got that out of the way. Let's start building this. So display by location dot equals, and we're gonna set up a nav. Um, and we're gonna give it a class of prev next post. This needs to be an equals, this needs to be that, and this needs to be that. Okay, then we're gonna do display by location dot equals, and we're gonna give it a div with a class equal to nav previous. display by location dot equals. So now we're gonna use a WordPress function. This WordPress function is called get next post link. And as the name suggests, it gets the next post link. So we'll do 
I'm actually going to copy this one here because it's kind of long. Save some time. Because instead of you watching me type, there's more important things we could talk about here as like, what is this doing? So this get post, get next post link, we pass into it a, a name. In this case, we're passing in previous. You'll also see too, we have a span tag here. And inside of the span tag, we have this crazy looking thing. And L-A-R-R. What those are, those are actually like these HTML characters. In case you didn't know, there's some symbols. There's, there are characters that you can put in that make different symbols like an ampersand or a, question, or a quotation mark or um, mathematical symbols, that kind of stuff. And the one we're using is going to be a left arrow and a right arrow. And you'll see that here in a second. And it's also storing in it the max number of pages. So whatever that max number of pages is, say it's three or four, it's saving that in here so that it knows whether or not, it's gonna use this to determine whether or not it needs to be another link, another next link. And, and this will make sense once you see it. Um, so then I'm gonna close out that div. Dot equals div and so forth and so on. And then the last one, I'm going to go ahead and copy this part in because it's pretty much repetitive of what I just did. We're going to open up another div called next post link, and it's going to have another function called get previous post link. So we're calling get next post link, and we're calling get previous post link. They both have the title next and previous with left or right arrows. Uh, this link, of course, doesn't need, and this will make sense, but it doesn't really need another anything else to it. That's what we got. Let's save this. Let's go see what happens. All right, there you go. So now you can see that we have our left arrow with previous, which is great. You can see that we have seven posts. If I click this, it then pops up with next, and it shows the additional four posts to make us a total of 11. And you can see how in this example, the next and previous, this is next, and then this is previous. You can see how they're disappearing and not appearing together. That's because it's it knows with this jobs num pages, num pages, max num pages, it knows how many pages that it should have. And that's how it can tell whether or not it what kind of link it needs to show. It also is using this page. So we didn't talk about this when we set it up. But what we're saying here is query variables. Query variables are what are in the string. So you can see up here it says page slash two. What it's checking is it's checking to see what page it's on. It's using this query variable to determine which page it's on. So WordPress is using a little bit of math here. It knows which page it's on because we set this page to parameter. It also knows how many pages it should be going through. So based on how many pages it could potentially display, as well as the query variable of which page it's on, it's able to dynamically determine whether or not it should be showing next or previous links. Now to br bring this full circle, if I go in here and I change this back to five, which is the default anyway, and refresh, now when I hit previous, you can see now I have a next and a previous, all right? And the reason that's, that's the case is because it knows that it has a third page. See, in this second page now, because it has 11 posts and it's showing five per, WordPress knows that it has three pages it can display. So therefore, when it's on page two, the user has the ability at that point to go to a previous page, or the next page. It, it can go both ways, so therefore both links uh, display. And that's how the pagination works. Uh, there's one more thing we do need to cover though. So we have pagination working, that's great. Uh, it could use some styling as you can see there because it's um, the, the links are side by side, it doesn't look all that great, but they're there. There is one more thing that we need to do. We set this up so that uh, the user can turn pagination on and off. The way this is set up right now, uh, it's controlling this thing called no found rows. I've touched on this, but no found rows is a query that WP query, which we're using, runs to count how many posts 
how many rows of posts there are. In order for it to do pagination, again, it needs to know how many posts it has in its in the query. And the way it does that is with no found rows. So no found rows set to false means that it will actually count those rows and you'll be able to do pagination. If you set pagination to true, let's just do that really quick and do this, you'll see that the pagination goes away. And the reason it goes away is because again, it was the WP query this time did not count the rows. So now this query does not know how many posts it has. It cannot, it cannot do pagination. But there's a problem though. Having the user set pagination to true to cut pagination off does not make any sense. So what we are going to do is we're going to make this a little more user friendly and we're going to let them set pagination to either on or off. And by default, it's going to be set to off. All right. Now to make this work, we need to change this paginations uh, attribute right here. We need to, we can't use this anymore because passing off into no found rows isn't going to work. It, it won't know what to do. That it needs a boolean true false. So we're going to give it a boolean true false, but we're going to do it ourselves. So we're going to create a new variable called pagination. We're going to make it equal to ats. Pagination. All right, so what we've done here is we've done a conditional, and this is a shorthand if else statement. And pretty much what we're saying is it is it if attributes pagination equals on, then set pagination to false, meaning that pagination will be on. I know it's a bit counterintuitive. It's hard for the user. It might be hard for you to understand. That's why we definitely need to set it for the user. However, if pagination does not equal on, meaning they want it to be off, then set pagination to true. And then what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll just change this up to pass in our new paginations uh, variable. And so now, depending on what the user passes in, it will turn pagination on or off the way they would expect it to. So right now pagination is set to off, so if we refresh this, it should still be off. But if we go to edit now, and we go in here, and we type pagination equals on, and we update it, and we view it, and we refresh it. You can already see right away, it already worked. Now we have pagination on, and it works. And again, we can go in here, we can change a lot of stuff, we can set the, type, set the count to seven, like we did earlier, update, view. We still have our pagination, but again, you can see you only see next and previous once each because it's dynamically calculating that stuff. So that's really good. I think we've made this a lot more user friendly now. This pagination really cuts on. They're able to determine which location jobs they want to show. They're able to control the count, the title. This is a very, very dynamic uh, short code, which I think is great. Um, there is one more use case that we haven't talked about. I'm just going to quickly touch on it. But <clears throat> after this end while right here, after we've done our loop. So this is where we output our posts and then we end our if loop. Before we end this if there are posts and we do something, we need to put a conditional in here for when there are not any posts. So what happens if there are no posts? If, for example, if there are no posts, uh, so if I go to location, West Virginia has a post. Let me edit this and make it not be in West Virginia to nothing. Go to my short code, edit this, and make it be West Virginia. Update, view. You can see that we're returning this display like by locations, but it's not working. And the reason it's not working is because there are no posts to be shown. So we don't want this to happen. Again, when you're creating any type of functionality like a shortcode, 
you really have to sit there and think about what are some of the possible uh, ways people could use this and potentially break it. One of the ways that this could break is if someone tries to put this on a page that and tries to reference a location that doesn't exist. We've already taken care of up here that if they don't give us a location, we just end it. But down here we need to do something in case they give us a location, but it's not a good one. So we'll go else. And we'll do display by location equals. And I'm going to paste this because it's kind of long. Yeah. So <laughs> what we're doing here is we're saying we're doing our S printf. And we're saying a p tag of job class error. And we're saying sorry, no jobs, no jobs listed in our placeholder were found. And then over here we do escape HTML uppercase word string replace. We talked about this earlier. The location. <laughs> it's a lot. I probably could have done that a lot better, but that's what we have. So essentially, we're just saying. Uh, sorry, no job listed. No jobs listed in whatever location were found. So let's save this and try it. There you go. It says sorry, no jobs listed in West Virginia were found. So again, we're giving our user a very useful cue. And again, we could style this. I you'll see that I gave it the same job error class. So if you were to go do the styling, both of these error messages would have the same styling, and we could give someone a warning that hey. The way you're trying to use this, something's not right, okay? And so that's it. We now are finished with this shortcode as it stands. Could there be more that we could do? Yeah, there's a few things we could do, but I think at this point you have a very good understanding of the power and the usages for shortcodes. Crank it up.